Howdy everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be looking at thrusters. Which ones are best used when, how to use each one, and what makes each one better than the others in their own certain ways. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Now, Vanilla Space Engineers only has three types of thrusters. Your atmospheric, your hydrogen, and your ion. Each one being able to be used in different situations. Atmospheric, as the name suggests, is mainly used on planets with an atmosphere. They're used pretty much only with battery power, so if you have a reactor, and a hydrogen engine, or batteries, you will be able to use them. If we go ahead and hop in here, we have a full battery with just a atmospheric thruster and a gyro up top. I'm not going to be able to control this very well, but you'll be able to see that if I just press 1 to unlock our landing gear, I can go. And I can tilt and fly around, do what I need to do with it. I'm not going to be able to stop because I do need thrust in every direction, but we will get to that here in a little while. Now, because I only had my vertical thruster, it's very hard to control. One thing we want to do in Space Engineers is try to put at least some form of thrust in every direction. So if we have one forward, let's go ahead and face one backwards. And then let's do a left and you on there. No, not gonna let you. We'll just put you on top. Alright. Oh, wrong view. And then I do want one facing downwards. So we'll go ahead and we'll just go ahead and put it on the in atmosphere, you don't necessarily need the downwards one. It just kind of helps, especially when you're building with the AI functions. They need the downward one to recognize which way to go. So now if I go ahead and unlock my landing gear, go up a little bit, you can see we're a lot more stable. I can go forward, backwards, left, right, and I can even go downwards and you'll see that thruster plume up well there it goes yeah and it's a lot more stable as long as you have a gyro <laughs> always be sure to have a gyro um, but atmospheric thrusters only consume electrical energy so as long as you have charge in your batteries or a reactor or something similar you'll be good to go. Now ions are very similar. All they use is electrical power, but their thrust output is not meant for uh, atmospheric or gravity. They put out a lot less thrust than atmospherics, but they do also consume a lot less power. So if we just go ahead and put, uh, we'll do like that, and we'll put one that way, and one that way. I don't know why I keep pressing that button. So if we look in our atmospheric ship, if we unlock and go up, if we look in the bottom right of the screen, I have two hours of power left, with one thruster going in every direction. If I were to hit up, it goes down to 25 minutes, and I'm using 60% of my power. If I press down, or C, to go downwards, it stays at 2 hours, mainly because the ship is just using gravity. And it stays at 16% usage. That surge you see, is that big vertical thruster trying to compensate and get us back to a hover state. So it kicks on to dampen 
and bring us back to a zero speed. If we go into the ions, I'm not even able to take off because of the weight. Press number one. I can still move and I can go forward. But as soon as I leave platform, you can see I just start sinking. And that's because ions don't have the thrust output to be able to actually lift this ship. Or actually, we are lifting very, very slowly. <laughs> so I will be able to get back on the actual platform, but not very fast. And slowing down would be even worse. There we go. Let's just get you back on the platform and lock down. Our last one to talk about is hydrogen. Hydrogen is kind of the best one to use in all circumstances because it has the most thrust output. It can lift the most with the same amount of engines. But it also uses extra parts as for the hydrogen tank the o2 generator and the cargo needed to carry the ice to refill the hydrogen tanks now you don't need cargo space you can just get your hydrogen directly from your base if you have a hydrogen tank there but it is a limited supply and it gets used up a lot faster than the ions or the atmospheric with the batteries. But if we unlock here, we can see we go up a lot faster. And we don't actually use battery power with hydrogen. If you look, as I'm going up, my battery usage stays at 5% and I still stay with 5 hours. That's because hydrogen engines actually don't use any battery power when being used. They only use hydrogen. Now I am in a creative mode, so I do not have a hydrogen limit at the moment. And I forgot one, so I'm gonna put that on. And that's not connected, so that was kind of pointless, whatever. But what we can do is kind of just use our gyro, tilt back a little bit, and there we go. That's the three engines and their basic uses. When you get into more advanced ships, especially in space, you're going to start combining hydrogen and ion, where hydrogen will be your go-to, get out of dodge, um, kind of save your ass engine and your ions will be your primaries using less battery power you're not using any hydrogen and you can just recharge the batteries with reactors solar panels what have you atmospheres are only used in atmospheric planets but you can combine hydrogen and atmospheres say on a miner where you use your atmosphere when you're traveling to the mine when you get a little overloaded, you can switch on the hydrogens, give you a little more boost of energy, and that'll get you where you want to go. So when it comes to engines and knowing how much you're going to need, there is a couple different websites you can go to to calculate the amount of thrust, how much thrust, and all that you're going to want. But it does require you to kind of build your ship first and integrate the thrusters into the armor afterwards. After a while, you will get the hang of how many thrusters you're gonna need for the size ship, especially if you're integrating hydrogens into it, to where you can build the O2 gens, the tank, and the conveyor systems for it into the armor as you're building. But the one that I tend to use the most is called Space Engineer's Thruster Calculator. And all you have to do is put in your weight. So let's say 400,000. Ship size is small ship. 
gravity is going to be 1.0 for here on the earth bike and thruster efficiency is 100 percent fill my cargo container with ores and this is going to tell you how many thrusters you're going to need preferably in each direction if you're going to be rolling and flying pretty easily you'll need 24 large ions 297 small ions 9 large hydrogen 42 small hydrogen 8 large atmospheric 45 small atmospheric and it actually works pretty well so I will link I will put a link in the description to this one the other one you can use is the actual space engineers one off of their wiki and I will link to this as well. You can actually select which planet you're going to be on. If we go to 400,000 again, small grid ship. And let's say we take that same number that it gave us, 24 large ions. And let's just go ahead and put it in there. We can see the actual efficiency of those ions as we're going. So down here, this is altitude and acceleration. Down here at the lowest level, sea level or zero, we're not getting much thrust out of. We'll be able to get off the ground, but not by much. If we bring this down to 20, there's not much difference, but you can see we're not going to be doing a whole hell of a lot. Let's bring it down to five. Here you can see we're not getting any acceleration. <laughs> and then as you get up in the atmosphere, you might be able to turn them on, but you're not going to be using anything up until you hit about yeah 9,000 meters 8,800 that's when you'll be able to actually kick them off so that goes to show you and I will link to both of these in the description feel free to use whichever one you want that way you don't have to do the math yourself because it's kind of a pain but that works now when it comes to each thruster type one thing you have to keep in mind when putting them on your ship is the clearance for the actual plume of the thruster you do not want blocks to be right in front of it if you do you're gonna have a bad day <laughs> i mean lack of a better term if we look and i'll have editing kind of zoom in on this we are just at the edge of where that plume touches and is able to damage it go through it i will put some images up on screen now for the different distances that you want to keep your blocks at to keep it clear that way you're not damaging anything and you're not having random explosions on your ship it's not hard a good rule of thumb is about five to six blocks for atmospheric and ions and then for hydrogens you want to probably go eight to nine for large and small ones around five so just something to keep in mind that's pretty much it with thrusters though there isn't much to them i would definitely consider doing a mix of thrusters if you're building any ship whether it be just a small explorer ship that you can slap some atmospherics on because you will run out of battery power eventually so having some hydrogen to kind of take off and then land and then charge your batteries in between kind of works. But with that, I will leave you guys to it. That's the basics for any of those thrusters. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below and we'll see you in the next episode. Have a good day, everybody.